I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land of which we meet, the Bundjalung people, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. My name's Ellen Fleeton. I'm a Future Students Officer here at Southern Cross University. And this afternoon's panel, or are we still in morning? No, we're afternoon now. This afternoon's panel is about studying nursing at Southern Cross University. We have an amazing panel here today to answer your questions and share some insights. So what I'll do is get them to introduce themselves and explain a little bit about their connection to Southern Cross. So we'll start with you, Elisa, if that's okay. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, so my name's Elisa Head and I'm a student here at Southern Cross Uni. I'm in my final semester, um, which is re a really exciting time at the moment. So hopefully I can share the joy with you all. Beautiful. And Nikki. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Dr Nicola Whiting. Um, I'm one of the senior lecturers in nursing here on the Lismore campus. Um, and I've been heading up the brand new, very exciting curriculum um, that if any of you choose to stay with us next year, you will get um, the opportunity to experience. Um, and I've also got a role around the shared unit, so the interprofessional um, learning across um, nursing as well. So thanks for coming. Thank you for being here. And Frankie. Hello, um, my name's Frankie. I graduated, uh, graduated from the nursing end of 2020. And I'm currently in my second year of being a registered nurse at Lismore Base Hospital. I also was lucky to receive the Honours Scholarship when I finished my nursing, um, of which when you get to third year, you will be offered. And um, doing that in the caregiver of a stroke survivor and their readiness for discharge. So that's where I am at the moment. And I'm also currently working at so you, you study part-time and work part-time and I'm working part-time in ICU at Lismore Base. Loving it. Wow, busy lady. Um, so I have a couple of questions for our panel and then we'll open it up to the audience for their questions as well. So I'm going to start with you, Nikki, if that's okay. Um, could you tell us about the two main nursing degrees that we have at Southern Cross? So the Bachelor of Nursing and the Enrolled Nursing Pathway. Yep, sure. So we've got two main programs here at Southern Cross University. Um, so the first one is a three-year, if it's full-time or six-year part-time, Bachelor of Nursing degree. So within that degree, you study 24 units across the three-year, a mixture of um, theory and practical, um, and you would complete 840 hours of practice experience, um, so out in a variety of places. The second pathway that we've got is a shorter pathway, and that's for those of you that might be qualified already as enrolled nurses that might have done that diploma at TAFE. Um, and what we do with that um, degree is you still come out with a Bachelor of Nursing at the end of it, but it's just shortened to two years, because what we do is we recognise your pr prior experience and your prior learning that you did at TAFE. Um, so slightly less hours um, with that course. So in terms of the PEP component, you'd have only 640 hours to complete. Um, and the, the way that runs is you, you study alongside the bachelor students, um, but at the beginning of the course, what we offer you is two sort of bridging units, which just bridges the gap between what you've done at TAFE and bringing you up to the speed of a second year um, student nurse on the normal bachelor's program. So that's kind of the main difference between the two programs. Thank you. And it's great that we do have those two different options available to students. So we all know, we all watch the news, nurses are in very high demand now more so than ever. Um, we have a really high employment rate for our graduates. Um, is that correct? That is correct. And it's something we're really proud of. Um, and it's testament to the staff and the course um, that we've got here at Southern Cross University. So we've, um, from the Good Universities Guide, got a five-star ranking again. Um, and we have a 98% graduate full-time employment rate. Um, we're second in Australia for our employment rate, um, which, yeah, again, just testament to SCU and the quality of our courses. Yeah, and I mean, Frankie's already spoken about her experiences already working at the base hospital as well. Were you snapped up pretty quickly? Um, I, with my interviews, I was not great. My nerves definitely got the best of me. But I feel that... Um, if you voice your passion and if you are that that um, that squeaky wheel, you will get picked up for sure. You need to really just voice your passion and your eagerness to work with them and you'll get snatched up for sure. Awesome. Um, Nikki, can you tell us a little bit about the course curriculum and how teaching is delivered in the nursing degree? 
Yep. So as I said before, we've got a brand new curriculum that starts in 2023. We're required to update our curriculum every five years. So for our 2023 entry students, you're very lucky to come onto a, a really innovative and exciting um, curriculum. Um, we've really responded to what's going on in the local area. Um, so we're preparing you really well to work in this regional area, but also globally if that's where you, you, know, you want your career to take you. So the degree is a mixture of online teaching and face-to-face. -face. So the online is really, we recognise that students have other things going on. They have lives, they have work, etc. So with the online learning, it's self-paced, so you can complete that at a time that's convenient for you. And the idea of the online learning is really um, giving you the theoretical basis to bring into the face-to-face. -face. And in the face-to-face, -face, it'll either be in the form of a tutorial where you may have up to 30 students working on case studies together, etc. Um, or it might be a clinical laboratory where you just have 15 students and that's, that's the bit most students really enjoy. That's getting your hands on there. It's doing your injections and, and bits and pieces like that. So, and the online learning is always supported by staff and also with peer learning as well. So you're never on your own um, when you're doing that online learning. You're, you're fully supported um, by staff and your peers as well. Yeah, and those facilities, the nursing labs that we have at Southern Cross are just absolutely impeccable, aren't they? Yeah, if you get a chance to do a campus tour, um, I know Fiona's over there um, today, so she'll show you around the simulation labs. Um, it's one of the best um, clinical laboratory facilities in Australia um, that we have, um, and we can do some amazing things with masks, and um, we've got the 3G simulators there that bleed and vomit and do all sorts of things that you'll see when you go out on your practice. Um, so a few crazy faces I'm looking at now. Um, but it's, uh, the simulation environment's great for building up your confidence. It's a safe space that you can make mistakes and learn for them before you go out into practice. So it's great fun. Absolutely. And making those mistakes and failing in the labs is so important because we want you to do that here, not at the hospital. That's right. <laughs> um, Nikki, how do the placements work? So do they only take place in hospital settings or are there other areas students can go on placement? And how far away from home would students travel for their placements? So we want to give you a very broad experience. Um, not everybody decides to work in the hospital when they finish. Um, and it's really important that you've got that exposure to a variety of, uh, of different contexts for nursing. The placements, what we call PEPs, so pra practice experience placement, um, are aligned to the clinical unit. So I spoke just a moment ago about the simulation laboratories, for example. So when you've got a placement, they're attached to those clinical units. So where you go on those PEPs um, will be based on the skills that you've been learning in that theoretical unit and you've been learning in the labs. So sorts of placements you will go on... Um, one thing we're really proud of at Southern Cross is all of our students go on a mental health placement. That's not compulsory, but it's something that we recognise as being really important. No matter where you work, um, you will come across people um, with mental um, health issues. So we go, you go to elderly care, out into primary health care, um, hospitals for acute and chronic um, critical care areas potentially. You might get lucky enough to get a paediatric placement. Um, and then we also offer some speciality placements as well. So um, we offer something called Recovery Camp for mental health, where you go down to Sydney. Um, I don't know whether Frankie did that, but um, you can go down to Sydney and actually camp over um, and stay with um, people and work with them. You can go to rural and remote areas if you want to. Um, we have international placements, which we're hoping, fingers crossed, um, we can get up and running um, as soon as it's safe to do so. So, huge amount of opportunities for you in that, in that PEP space, which gives you a really good um, idea of places that you might like to work when you finish. Awesome. And what kinds of different roles can our graduates get when they complete their degree? So, um, you know, are there any specialisations that they can go into or different places they can work other than the hospital? Yeah, the thing about nursing is you can take it anywhere, absolutely anywhere. The world's your oyster. If you don't like one particular specialty that you're working in, you can guarantee you can get a job somewhere else. Um, our students in the past, yes, they've gone into hospitals, absolutely. Um, some of them have specialised in critical care, for example, or paediatrics. And I mean, Frankie can talk a little bit more about that in the moment in terms of where she's potentially specialised. Um, but you can also go into the community, um, out rural and remote, for example. I've got a graduate at the moment who's working on film sets. So he's been, um, he started off, yeah, started off as a COVID nurse 
um, on a film set and has just, yeah, loves the fame and working with the, those people. So he's on film sets. I've got another um, student or graduate that uh, is on the cruise ships. So you really can go anywhere. Um, and then, of course, you've also got research, um, education, leadership, management, for example. So lots, lots of different opportunities. So much variety too. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now, Elisa, if that's okay. Absolutely. So what motivated or inspired you to train to become a nurse? So I, I came in as a mature age student. And I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of at that age where I appreciate a handrail, a uh, nicely painted zebra crossing. I can appreciate that. So uh, I come as a mature age student. So I come from risk management. And I had an experience in my life where my brother was diagnosed with bowel cancer, 35 years young, uh, and he unfortunately had six months left to live. So it was quite um, a very hard time in both of our lives. But it was funny because I, as much as I loved my job in risk management, I loved the people. I also felt like it was just a temporary holding pattern. And it wasn't until I had that experience in the hospital with my brother where I started to see a vision of my future self. And it turned out to be, although a sad time, it was one of the most magical times in my life. So it, that, that situation created an experience for me to see, like I said, that, that word, a, a vision of my future self. And so when I lost Damien, um, I made a commitment to get into nursing and I've done nursing full time. And it's amazing. I know that some of you are here because you've either got an auntie or an uncle or a mum or a dad who are nurses or in the healthcare profession. You've probably lost someone recently and it's been the experience that you needed to get on the trajectory of nursing, which, you know, my, my heart goes out to you. But I promise you, you will find healing. You will find reflection. You will find how resilient you are in this space. Um, I highly recommend it. I've had some amazing experiences in these three years. I've done the rural placement out at Charleville. Um, have you ever seen the movie uh, you know, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? It was kind of like that, me going into this tiny little town. and like, who is this, Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> She's dancing. Um, it was just absolutely amazing. And I tell you what, I worked in a tiny little hospital that has a very strong relationship, the Rural Flying Doctor Service. And, you know, there's Swiss Army knives out there. And I had that experience. It was just magical and it really set me up. I'm also, um, I work uh, as an assistant in nursing. I actually know my mate over here, Frankie. I've worked with Frankie at Lismore Base. Um, and so that's also been a, a, a wonderful experience for me too, is just working in the hospital space as well as studying, something I highly recommend. But so here I am, third year. I've got my post-grade interview in two weeks' time, guys. Hello. I've played for my registration. Watch out. Um, it's all happening and um, and I'm just going to hand it back over because I could honestly talk um, and you'd all have to take annual leave if you've got a job and I won't do that to you. So I'll hand it back over to you. I think we could happily listen to you all afternoon. <laughs> um, can I ask you one more question, Elisa? What's been your favourite thing? You've, you've talked really amazingly and broadly about the profession and what motivated you, but here at university, what's been your favourite experience that you've had so far? My favourite experience, I'm going to have to say, is the window of opportunity. You don't just pull out the Windex and clean the window, you open up, you walk through the window. There have been many of those windows of opportunities. It's the connections and the relationships that I've built with my fellow students. They're, I mean, I've got sisters for life. Um, uh, it's the support that I've received from my lecturers, from the labs, I mean, the only way I can describe the support, it's like a belt holding the pants up. Um, I, the, the, the opportunities really. And I mean, you're at this beautiful campus. You've got a pond down the back there. You've got these gorgeous trees. You've got koala bears in the trees, guys. They're chewing away on the eucalyptus leaves. And you get to have those experience when you study. The, the library is amazing. Hopefully when you do your tour, um, you know, just put on the – wear the glasses of this is going to be the next three years of my life. And trust me, you'll have a transcendental moment when you're just walking around in nature thinking this is where I'm going to potentially be doing my nursing degree. This is unbelievable. And so the experiences, there's not just one, there's, there's boundless experiences that I have, I have had and I will carry away with me. Um, so these are the days of our lives, nursing, SCU, Lismore base, sorry, Lismore base, Jesus, that's when, when you know it's too much time in nursing. Um, so just be present with it today, just be present with your experience um, on this wonderful campus 
And um, so many, many, many transcendental moments and wonderful experiences that I've had. Sounds fantastic. I might want to study nursing now, I think. <laughs> um, Frankie, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, in the hospital where you work, I mean, we know nurses are in huge demand. Um, are you seeing any particular roles that are coming up that there's that there might be more demand for than others? The amount of texts that I receive on a daily basis um, saying that they are short of staff, that they're needing extra nurses, AINs, um, double ENs, RNs, is not solely focused on one ward or the other, it's everywhere. Um, I suppose some wards that have their own little niches, like such as ICU or ED um, or pre-op, they've got their staff kind of set in stone um, as such. So usually they don't, like, they're not crying out um, as much as other wards, like, uh, as much as general care or uh, medical. But it seems to be, from my experience, that many wards are needing more nurses. It's not just one or the other. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. What is the most rewarding part for, for you in your nursing career? What do you find most rewarding? Oh, man. Um... I must say it's, uh, for example, I'll go to work now that I'm in ICU. I'll go to work and I'll spend the day and it's rocking up, saying hi to the team and it's like, and it's beginning that foundation of, all right, today's going to be a great day. We're going to take amazing care of these patients. Um, it's it's the teamwork, it's the um, the developing of a bond with not only the patient but their family um it's seeing them come out of that sedation or coming out of that rough period that they've just gone through and being like i am here for you um it's moments when such as covid when family members couldn't even come in and you're there with their loved one who's who's uh, going to pass away in the next few hours and it's holding their hand saying i know that you don't have family here but I'm here with you. And it's just being that support, even if they might not be able to respond, you can at least be comforted knowing that you've done the best that you can. Um, I love what I do without a doubt. And you have to, as a nursing student, you have to love what you do. It's three years. It's endless study. Um, the sims that we have here, some people laugh when you're doing them or because you're talking to a... To a um, to a doll but in ICU we do them on a daily basis we do those sims daily and we act like as though this is a real patient they are really having a cardiac arrest because you because those are those moments that you can kind of reflect back and go oh maybe maybe I would have done that differently and at least though you've experienced that on a doll not on a patient so yeah rewarding all of it all of it there are days where I go oh my gosh that was such a rough day like I felt like I was being torn here and there and everywhere but I leave the ward I leave the hospital every shift being so grateful for for that I have such a strong passion for what I'm doing because I know that it's a lifelong journey and I'm so so keen for that. That's awesome. Thank you, Frankie. So what I ha will do now is I have a question that I'll ask all three of our panellists to answer and it is the one piece of advice you would like to impart on on these lovely people in the room who are considering a career in nursing and considering studying nursing at SCU. Nikki, what's your advice? I knew she was going to ask me first because she hadn't, she hadn't prepped me on this question. <laughs> um, for me, I'd say um, go in with an open mind. Um, be open to new experiences, um, be honest with yourself, um, reach out for help and support if you need it along the way. Um, all the staff are here and your fellow students are here to support you through your journey um, and just enjoy it. Good answer. <laughs> Alita. Before I go into that, there's a joke and it's, I'm not scared of failure, but I'm scared of heart failure. You'll come across a lot of these nursing jokes I know you connect with that, Frankie. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> um, advice. My advice is honestly, don't compare yourself 
to your work colleagues, to your fellow uh, nursing buddies, do not compare yourself. Just compare yourself to who you were yesterday, how you interact with nature, how you interact with your study, uh, how you are today. Because if it's your journey, you know, you're not living their journey, you're living yours. It's your experience, it's your life. Be present Um, and also balance, you know, Please, no matter how busy you are with work, uni, study, find moments in your day to just walk outside, go for a walk, go for a bike ride, go for a swim and maintain that balance. And most importantly, laugh. Just have a laugh. Enjoy because laughter connects you with your patients and with your colleagues and with everything around you. It really does. It makes it, it allows us to be present. Um, my advice is just be in the moment. Have fun. And, um, and all, always be compassionate. Always think about where has this person come from in their life? Because if you can take that perspective, oh my God, it will take you to places that will launch you outside of the solar system. It reminds you of why you're here. Great advice. And Frankie, any final last words from yourself? Mm, I suppose as, uh, as a student, don't be scared to ask questions. People, when you're out on PEP, when you're out on placement, when you've graduated as a registered nurse, people will question the ones that don't ask as opposed to the ones that do. Like you really need to, if if you, even if you think it's a silly question, nothing is a silly question and that's what I've learned. I was very quite timid to ask questions initially, but now uh, they cannot stop me. I am forever asking questions and I feel that it, It not only kind of uh, gives me some sort of um, guidance, but it also can can prompt further questions, which might make the which might make the picture more clearer in total. But and you need to love what you do. As I said, you really need to love it. Studies endless, uh, shifts are endless, double shift. and when you love it, people can really tell. Like if I was sick in hospital, I wouldn't want a nurse caring for me who clearly doesn't have a passion for what she's doing. You have to really love what you do, definitely. Great advice, thank you. And thank you for sitting on today's panel and thank you to our panel members. Have a great day, everyone.